Hello friends, uh, my name is Dr. Rahul Kaushik and today we are going to cover our next topic which is production, estimation and utilization of phytoconstants. Today we are going to discuss another important phytoconstant of your syllabus which is senocide. Senocides, if you look at the screen, it is this is the structure of senocide and this senocide is composed of a sugar moiety and a non sugar moiety. This is the non sugar moiety. So, together uh, a sugar moiety and a non sugar moiety together they form a glycoside and if you look at the structure deeply then you can analyze that it is a dimer. Uh, you are having two anthracene rings and with the, this ketone group it forms the ketonic group or anthraquinone. So, it is a dimeric anthraquinone glycosides with O glycoside linkage and it is isolated from the leaves of Cassia angustifolia and this plant Cassia angustifolia it belongs to the family of pulses that is leguminaceae. You can see that this oxygen is involved in the linkage of sugar moiety and non sugar moiety. So, you can also term them as O glycosides. So, senocytes they are O glycosides dimeric in nature. Cassia angustifolia the plant if you look at the distribution of this plant, this plant is distributed to uh, uh, to uh, west of India. If you uh, look at the uh, Indian territory then you can find this plant uh, found widely in various parts of west Punjab. It is also uh, cultivated in uh, Arabia, Somalia and Sindh. And if you see the nativeness or the origin of this plant and then uh, you can uh, you can see that it is native to Arabia or Arab Amirates. Senocytes the uh, plant constituent it exists in four forms senocide A, senocide B, senocide C and senocide D. If you look at the senocide A it is a trans form and it is optically active, optically active and it is levorotatory. So, it rotates the plane of polarized lights towards the left. It is available in high concentration in the plant and it is insoluble in water. Please note that it is insoluble in water. Senocide B, it is mesoform of senocide and it also occurs in high concentration, but it is water soluble. So, they, there are two uh, chemical moieties which are uh, available in high concentration in the Cassia angustifolia, but one of them is insoluble in water and another is soluble in water. Next, if you look at the next slide, you can see we have senocide C and senocide D. They also occur in trans and meso forms. The A glycone part of senocide C, it is levorotatory, but it occurs in low concentration as compared to the senocide A. So, senocide A and senocide C, they are exist in trans forms, whereas senocide D and senocide B, they exist in uh, uh, meso form. Senocide D is dextrorotatory and it is also occurs in low concentration if compared with the senocide D, sorry senocide B. So, both senocide A and C they are uh, levorotatory and they exist in transform, whereas senocide B and senocide D they are mesoforms and they are dextrorotatory. But it is very important to note that senocide A and senocide B they exist in the plant in higher concentration. So, our purpose of isolation will be focused on these two senocytes, senocyte A and senocyte B. Uses, uh, it is used as luxative and purgatives. It softens your stool and help to pass out it from the your intestine. Moving on to the cultivation of senna, if you can see the slide, these are the leaves of senna which are senna cassia angustifolia. These are found wild in the western part of India like uh, western Punjab or uh, uh, parts of Sindh and uh, Pakistan. These are the leaves which are obtained from, uh, these are dried leaves which are obtained after uh, uh, drying the uh, senna leaves. You can also uh, use the senna pods, you can also see the pods of senna. These senna pods can also be utilized for the isolation of your phytochemical senocide. So, you can see you can also see the dried powder of uh, 
dried powder of senna from this we can isolate the phytochemical senoside. Since we are concerned with the uh, with the phytochemical uh, senoside, so we should know the mechanism of action by which the these senoside they act, act, act on your body. So if you look at the slide, you can see as you take the senna, it enters your body, and after digestion, the anthraquinones they reaches to your intestine. This is the intestinal lumen. intestinal lumen here what this anthraquinone do they exert two mechanisms of action or they act by two mechanisms first it increases the uh, uh, mucus secretion or the secretion of water and other fluids in the intestinal lumen and along uh, sidewise it also causes the irritation of the uh, mucosa or the lumen of the intestine due to the irritation and this uh, increased secretion or the increased lubrication of the intestine, it uh, causes the muscular contraction and due to the muscular contraction, it helps in the peristalsis. Peristalsis means the movement of bowel inside your intestine. So, this is the mechanism of action of your senocytes. Exactly what happened? Senocytes, senocyte A and senocyte B, they are being digested by gut bacteria and they are converted into cinidin A and cinidin B. Cinidin A and cinidin B, they are being absorbed by your blood and in the blood, the enzyme beta glucosidase, it act on cinidin A and cinidin B and convert them into reine and throne. And this reine and throne, please remember that this reine and throne is the main chemical constant which causes or which, uh, which induces the luxative action or on your intestine of uh, which is responsible for the luxative action of your senocytes. Moving on to the next slide, this is the isolation part, how we can isolate the uh, senocytes in the mixture form. There are two methods, we will be discussing another other method also, where we will isolate the senocytes uh, separately. Here we isolate the senocyte in the mixture form. You can see the procedure that uh, first we took the powdered senna leaves as we have uh, seen the powder of senna we took that powder and uh, it uh, we defat it uh, we have to remove the fatty content from this because it is of no use so we defat it using benzene in electric shaker for 2 hours and the filtered the mark or the defat content that is obtained is then extracted with methanol 70 percent for 4 hours using uh, soxalate apparatus the mixture is then filtered under vacuum and concentrated partially. So, this is the extraction. The extract is concentrated uh, using uh, your uh, uh, rotatory vacuum evaporator and this concentrated extract is then acidified with hydrochloric acid 2 pH 3 to 3.4 and the motto behind adding this hydrochloric acid is to dissolve the impurities which are available in the which are present in the leaves which may be cont uh, contributed to the leaves from the environmental factors and the mixture is then filtered. To the filtrate, we add the calcium chloride prepared in denatured spread. This calcium chloride uh, which we have added is prepared especially in denatured spread. The mixture is then again basified using ammonia to pH 8.0 and kept aside for 2 hours. So, we, uh, we, we, uh, we, we add the calcium chloride, uh, sorry, we basify the uh, uh, mixture to 8.0 and kept it aside for 2 hours. After 2 hours, the calcium senoside, the mixed form of calcium senoside, it was obtained in the form of precipitate. It is then separated and dried in desiccator using phosphorus pentoxide. The, uh, the desiccant we have used is phosphorus pentoxide. This is the material we have used for drying the senocytes. So, we got the uh, crude mixture of senocyte in the form of pale brown hygroscopic powder and we can further process it using other methods like column chromatography to obtain the senocytes in the purified form. This is the desiccator which we have used. What is this, this desiccator? We put the desiccant here in this block and there is a perforated plate over there. We, the content which we have to uh, dry, we, we, we put it into the china dish and place the china dish over there. 
the senate is and the uh, assembly is closed the uh, the whole assembly of desic desiccator is closed with the airlock and uh, we use the glue or the silica uh, silica you can say silica grease over there to uh, pack the uh, desiccant uh, to pack the desiccator so uh, the commonly used desiccant uh, which we we can use for uh, this desiccator they are activated charcoal calcium sulfate calcium chloride and molecular sieves which are typically zeolites we have uh, also shown you the electrical shaker which we can use for extraction as uh, i am showing these uh, uh, instruments because we have uh, i have mentioned these instruments in your uh, extraction part so it is very important to know how these uh, these instruments or these uh, assemblies works so in electrical shaker we you place the material over here and this uh, electrical shaker machine it rotates it it it, it gives you jerks so during due to this jerks the the uh, the content of the um, cellular material of the plant cell it uh, it is dissolved in, into the uh, your solvent moving on to the next procedure of uh, production of uh, senoside a and b separately here we took the senna leaves powder it is extracted with ethanol chloroform which is in the combination of 93 to 7 for 30 minutes the mixed content is then re extracted with acidic alcohol and this acidic alcohol is prepared by dissolving oxalic acid in methanol and kept overnight at room temperature after capping overnight at room temperature on the next morning you can see the precipitate of senoside a which are formed and these precipitate of senoside a is then recrystallized using the solvent triethylamine so in this way you can obtain the senoside a for senoside b you have to uh, you have to treat the uh, above uh, senna leaves the senna senoside b is precipitated using 10 percent methanolic solution of calcium chloride and separated using methanol ammonia in the ratio of 60 to 40 and uh, uh, mixture sorry uh, separated using the solvent mixture of methanol and ammonia in the ratio of 60 to 40 the senoside b is then recrystallized using glycomonoethyl ether so this is the second method which in which we can isolate the senoside a and senoside b uh, independently or separately if you look at, we have isolated uh, so we have uh, we have seen the uh, we have seen the background or the family from which this plant came from we have seen the extraction part after this extraction we should ensure that whether the extracted material or the isolated compound is uh, uh, really anthraquinone glycoside or really senosides or not for so for that we have a chemical identification test for senoside more commonly this chemical identification test is called as brown triggers test so in this test what we do in this test we take the dried extract of the drug we uh, add to it 1 ml of dilute scl the mixture is then heated for few minutes and filtered this is filtered while the mixture is hot it is very important to filter the material when it is hot to which we have to add equal volumes of chloroform and the mixture is shaken well after shaking the mixture separate the lower layer which is uh, that of chloroform where chloroform being heavier it uh, settles down at the uh, bottom of the separating funnel so to the lower layer of uh, chloroform you add the ammonia and uh, shake the uh, mixture well the lower ammonical layer uh, now the ammonia being heavier than chloroform it settles down uh, the uh, at the base of uh, the separating funnel the lower ammonical layer it shows the rose pink color which indicates the presence of anthraquinone glycosides so this is the specialized test for detection of anthraquinone glycosides these are the instruments uh, which we have mentioned above in the extraction procedure this is the soxlate apparatus it is composed of two, three parts the uh, solvent reservoir the extractor and the con condenser we have already discussed the functioning of this uh, soxlate extractor in our previous lectures we place the solvent here we pack the drug here in the extractor the drug is packed in the form of thimble what happen uh, the solvent uh, we provide the heat the solvent gets evaporated it enters the extractor through the side tube 
and here when uh, where the drug is packed the solvent vapors they try to escape and as soon as they try to escape they get condensed down and after condensing the uh, drops they came in co contact with the drug contact with the drug the solvent came in contact with the drug and extraction takes place and as soon as the extraction fluid it reaches to this height this is the siphon tube this is the siphon tube as soon as the liquid extraction liquid it reaches to the siphon top of the siphon tube uh, the solvent the entire liquid due to the mechanism the entire liquid it gets uh, uh, reversed to the solvent reservoir so here you have the drug as well as the solvent the extracted uh, co constituent and the solvent and this is the functioning of uh, your uh, separating funnel here you can uh, you can partition a phytoconstituent between two uh, between two uh, solvents so two immiscible liquids can be separated and uh, you can also uh, partition a phytoconstituent between two liquids so this is the separating funnel and succulent apparatus next moving on to the vacuum rotary evaporator this is another major in instrument we have used for extract for concentration of our extracts what we do we uh, we put the extract to be concentrated here in this uh, round bottom flask and it has a mechanism of rotation we provide heat we provide heat to this and uh, due to the heat and rotation there forms a fine film of uh, solvent and this the molecules of solvent they evaporate they evaporate at a very low temperature because simultaneously we also have provided with the vacuum through this tube so yeah negative the, so there develops a negative pressure and due to that negative pressure the solvent or the extract the solvent from the extract it starts to evaporate at a very low temperature so what happens uh, here what are the advantage of this assembly here your uh, phytochemical which is generally thermolabile Uh, you 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 can protect your uh, phytoconstituent from getting thermal degradation also the solvent recovery is there in this instrument so uh, you can get have the solvent recovered from the extract and you can have the uh, safety or the uh, you can pre uh, prevent the thermal degradation of your phytoconstituent so this is the rotary vacuum evaporator and it is very commonly used and important assembly in your extraction method now the properties of cyanocytes we have got the melting point of 200 uh, to 240 degree celsius of this uh, cyanocytes because there are four forms so the range of melting point it is 200 to 240 degree celsius the boiling point is around 1144.8 degree celsius at 760 mm hg the solubility the cyanocytes they are soluble in organic solvents but they are poorly soluble in uh, water density Uh, the cyanocytes they are heavier than water having a density of 1.743 molecular weight is around 862.7 grams per mole form it exists in the form of yellow brown powder it is a yellow brown powder as you can see in this this is the crude cyanocyte powder water solubility as we have seen already in the uh, introduction part that cyanocyte a and cyanocyte b they are exist in high concentration where uh, but the cyanocyte a is water soluble whereas cyanocyte c sorry uh, cyanocyte a is water insoluble whereas cyanocyte b is water soluble so cyanocyte a and d which are insoluble in water they have a solubility at 25 degree celsius only 0.04 086 mg of cyanocytes they are soluble in 1 liter of water so this is very low solubility of cyanocyte a and b whereas cyanocyte b and cyanocyte d they are uh, sparingly soluble if you look at the lambda max of uh, uh, cyanocytes it is 276 nanometer lambda max means the absorption maximum of uv radiation at which the uh, phytoconstituent cyanocyte it shows the maximum absorbance of the ultraviolet radiation and this lambda max can be utilized in uv analysis of this drug moving on to the separation estimation identification of the phytoconstituent there are various parameters for uh, separation uh, identification or estimation both quantitative and qualitative estimation of your phytoconstituent so here we have uh, tlc and hplc Uh, these uh, techniques uh, we uh, hplc and tlc we can use these techniques for quantitative as well as qualitative analysis 
So, we have the plate uh, column uh, specification if we take the TLC first if you look at the TLC specification we use the pre prepared they are uh, these plates silica gel plates they are already available in the market you can take these silica gel plates 60 F 254 then the mobile phase for TLC analysis we have used is 2 propanol and ethyl acetate and water and formic acid in the ratio of 8 8 part of 2 propanol 8 part of ethyl acetate uh, 5.8 part of water and 0.2 part of formic acid the flow rate or injection volume is not applicable in TLC detection of the spots uh, after developing the TLC using that particular uh, solvent system which we have uh, uh, we, uh, we have uh, discussed so you can detect that uh, uh, your spots of uh, sinusoid separation using detection agent or derivatizing agent like uh, uh, para aldehyde reagent you can spray the TLC plate with para aldehyde reagent and uh, dry the plate at 110 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes and observe it at uh, long wavelength ultraviolet radiations at 366 of nanometer. The RF value or retention factor value for sinusoid A was found to be 0.52 whereas sinusoid B the RF value was found to be 0.32. The sample for this TLC analysis is prepared by taking the leaf powder which is then refluxed and sonicated thrice for uh, using 10 ml of solvent for 45 minutes the mixture is then filtered and concentrated at 50 degrees celsius the uh, the volume is then make up up to 10 ml and the sample is used for spotting over the tlc plates the standard we have used sinusoid a sinusoid b standard we have used by dissolving 1 mg of sinusoid a and sinusoid b in 5 ml of methanol and we have used we have spotted the sample over the tlc plate if we look at the hplc analysis of this uh, uh, phytoconstituent, we have used the C18 column. C18 column is the octadecyl siloxane column, with the, uh, which is having the uh, pore size of 5 micrometer, and the column is maintained at 40 degrees Celsius for carrying out the analysis. The mobile phase for HPLC, we have used is acetonitrile, water, and phosphoric acid in a ratio of 20, 80, and 0.1. The flow rate of the column, uh, flow, flow rate of the mobile phase through the column was uh, uh, 1.2 ml per minute and the injection volume which we have injected into the HPLC machine is around 20 microliter. So, in this way you can, uh, uh, you can uh, do the HPLC. The detector of UHPLC was set uh, uh, at uh, 380 nanometer and the RT value or the retention time of uh, sinusoid A is was found to be 7.7 .7 minutes whereas sinusoid B retention time was found to be 4.37 minute. The sample for HPLC analysis was prepared by dissolving 5 gram of the drug in 45 ml of the solvent. Solvent is prepared by taking 7 part of methanol and 3 part of 0.2 percent aqueous sodium hydrogen carbonate. The mixture is then ultrasonicated for 30 minutes, filtered and the mixture is injected in the HPLC. 20 microliter of sample was injected in the HPLC. The standards, uh, the standard was prepared by dissolving 2 mg of uh, each of sinusoid A and sinusoid B in 10 ml of your solvent which, uh, which is 0.1 percent sodium hydrogen carbonate. So, in this way you can prepare the standard and the sample for HPLC analysis. And you can see here the uh, TLC and HPTLC chromatogram of sinusoid. We have placed the uh, standard of sinusoid A here, sinusoid B standard is placed here and the mixture of uh, uh, or you can say the, uh, the sample of uh, uh, sena leaves, sena leaves uh, sample 1, sample 2, sample 3, sample 4 and the sample of sena pod because we can also utilize sena pods for isolation of sinusoids. So, in this way you can see that sinusoid A and sinusoid B they can be detected in the in the spots. So, here you can see you can detect your uh, your uh, your uh, standard biomarker sinusoid A sinusoid B in your drug sample. This is the HPLC chromatogram we can uh, we can we, we obtain after HPLC and you can see that sinusoid A is having a retention time of 7.7 .7 minutes and the sinusoid B it is having a retention time of 4.37 minutes.
minutes. So, in this way you can carry out the uh, estimation of qualitative estimation of uh, sinusoids in your drug sample. There are other peaks also in this sample and they can be of uh, sinusoid A, uh, C and sinusoid D. So, we are more concerned with the sinusoid A and sinusoid B and we are more focused on sinusoid A and sinusoid B. So, we are only interested in the above two sinusoid, sinusoid B and sinusoid A. So, this is the HPLC analysis of our uh, phytoconstituents in our drug sample. So, if we talk about the utilization pattern of sinusoid or uh, the utilization or the uses of sinusoids, we can use the uh, uh, sinusoids in uh, constipation. Sinusoid is uh, uh, in Hindi sinusoid, sena leaves they are called as sanai leaves or sanai ke patte. Sanai ke patte it is one of the ingredient of your kayam churna of your uh, 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 various formulations which are used for easing out of constipation. So, sana leaves they are uh, they are majorly used for easing out of constipation. It is also used in irritable bowel syndrome. Uh, irritable bowel syndrome is something uh, where the person feels uh, uh, irritation or uh, uh, you can say pain while passing the urination uh, while, while, while passing the uh, feces. So, you can uh, also use the sinusoids for irritable bowel syndrome or to uh, ease out the irritable bowel syndrome. You can also uh, use the uh, sinusoid for preparation of bowel for colon procedure. Suppose you are having uh, you are going to have a colonic procedure. So, you have to uh, you have to flush your uh, intestine. Uh, you have to uh, flush the ingredient of your intestine. So, for that you can use sinusoids for preparation of your uh, uh, of your intestine for procedures or surgery also. Here we also have uh, an important use of sinusoid which is anti inflammatory and anti parasitic. So, anti inflammatory and anti parasitic use of uh, uh, this uh, sinusoids it is basically due to the presence of your phytoconstituent resveratrol resveratrol which is an antioxidant and uh, you can use uh, uh, this sinusoids for uh, anti inflammatory and anti parasitic action and while uh, while using the uh, uh, drug for uh, your uh, uh, while using the drug for your uh, um, uh, for constipation and for colonic procedures these anti inflammatory and anti parasitic or antioxidant actions they are very important for your for the activity of your uh, uh, drug. So, if you look at the back there are uh, there is something left ok. This is the uh, ok. This is the desiccator we can use for uh, drying out the uh, 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 extracts. So, what this desiccator will do? This desiccator will absorb the excess of moisture from your uh, from your uh, drug or from your extract. So, this desiccator can be uh, used for drying out your uh, extract. So, common desiccant we, uh, we can use activated charcoal, calcium sulphate, calcium chloride and molecular sieves and this is the electrical shaker. We have uh, bone trigger test, then we have separating and succulate apparatus, this is the rotary vacuum evaporator we, we can use. So, we, we should know what instrument we are going to use for carrying out the extraction procedure. We, we can use the HPLC and HPTLC for analysis of uh, phytoconstituent in our drug and this is the HPLT, HPLC chromatogram and these are the utilization of sinusoid, constipation, irritable bowel syndrome, bowel preparation for colonic procedure, anti-inflammatory, anti-parasitic uh, action and uh, thank you so much. Next we are going to do uh, uh, the next uh, drug our digoxin. Uh, we, we are going to cover the um, uh, digoxin in our next lecture. So, thank you so much. Thank you.